Berlin. A city renowned for its hipsters and nightclubs that are so hard to get into, it makes an entrance exam to Oxbridge look like a walk in the park. But as you're crying into your curry verse after getting rejected from Bergenheim for the 20th time, one thing you might notice when looking over the skyline of Berlin is a big shiny bull standing high above the rest of the city. Was ist das? you may ask. Well, hold on to your hooters as we delve into the story behind the Berliner Fernzentrum. Our story starts off in Berlin in the 1950s and as East Germany was in the midst of coming up with a plan to shut itself off from the West, the pesky capitalists had already beaten them to it. With the GDR not being a recognised state by most countries, its broadcasting abilities were severely restricted, limiting the country to just a couple of frequency signals. This in turn would have a significant impact on the nation's ability to distribute all its communist media to its citizens. Something had to be done. The solution was to build a gigantic broadcasting tower, allowing for all its comrades to bathe in all the country's communist media uninterrupted. It just needed to find out a decent location to place the tower. Initial proposals for the tower looked at putting it on the outskirts of Berlin, near Schoenfeld Airport. However, this was scrapped, as someone figured out that tall structures in the middle of flight paths wouldn't be such a great idea. It was eventually decided that the tower would be placed in Alexanderplatz, in the heart of Berlin. The tower was planned to ooze communism in its design, with its sphere being based off the Sputnik satellite being blasted into space, and it was intended to be lit red in the colour of socialism, providing a perfect opportunity to show off the might and prowess of Comrade Karl's teachings to West Berliners who gazed on. With the location of the tower being settled, the next task was to build the ruddy thing, which you might have gathered was not going to be the simplest thing to construct. The first big job was to find some land available for the tower to sit on. This saw vast clearance of once historic buildings within the district of Mitte, with the only building to remain being the Marienkirche, which sits next to the tower. Once land was available, the next task was to build the concrete shaft that the giant Sputnik would sit on, with construction on this starting on the 15th of March 1966. The shaft would be built using a method called climbing formwork. This consists of an inner steel skeleton which would then be smothered in concrete, with the inner steel skeleton growing a step faster than the shaft, allowing for a seamless looking concrete shaft. The shaft would climb to 250 metres requiring 8,000 cubic metres of concrete, enough for you to swim in over three Olympic sized swimming pools of the stuff. After the shaft was completed, you might think, how on earth did they get the sphere to sit on top of it? Well, the answer was to construct prefabricated segments of the steel frame for the sphere, 120 of them to be exact. These segments would then be hoisted over 200 metres above the ground by cranes, where they would be attached to the ring-shaped platform which formed the top of the shaft, the last piece being installed on the 7th of October 1968. The final thing was to add the radio mast, and voila, you've got yourself a 368 metre TV tower. The grand opening of the TV tower was on October the 3rd, 1969, and now the GDR had two coloured TV channels that all its citizens could marvel over. The tower would outlive its socialist surroundings, the GDR collapsing in 1990. However, as the wall started to get teared down, this was one communist structure that wouldn't face the chop, and to this day stands as not only Berlin, but Germany's tallest structure, charging tourists 20 euros for the privilege of going up its sphere and marvelling on the hipster paradise that is Berlin. <laughs>